Hey and welcome back. As you can probably tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be making one of those Toolmaker screwless vices. It's going to come as no surprise that the import vise that I bought last year has its issues. Mainly that it's not square, not parallel, and it suffers from a lot of jaw lift even though it really shouldn't. Plus, it is a bit big for a lot of the work that I do here on the mill, so having a smaller vise that's actually square is going to come as a big win. Now, Toolmaker's vise, if done correctly, should be square, parallel, and it shouldn't suffer from any jaw lift, which is really a big ask from my machines. I'm going to be making the vise from a piece of hot rolled 300 grade steel, it's a structural low carbon steel, very similar to 1020 grade. I'm going to use it because it's what I can get my hands on in the size that I need. Because it is low carbon, it is going to cause a few issues later in the project. But I'll worry about those issues when they come up. The first thing I'll do is clean up the base and the fixture, and I understand the irony of needing to use a vise to make a better vise to replace the first vise because it wasn't good enough, but for the first bit of machining, everything can be made oversized and then taken to its final dimension at a later date. And that's the vise and the fixed jaw now cleaned up. As you can probably tell, I'm going to go for one of those keyed vise designs. That being the fixed jaw is held onto the main body by a keyway and bolts. Most toolmaker vices, however, are one piece, i.e. the fixed jaw and the main body is machined from one piece of steel. But I just couldn't get my hands on a piece of steel that big, so I'm going to go for this design. And if I do it correctly, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. I'm machining the keyway, but I'll leave it slightly undersized so I can take it to its final dimension after it gets heat treated. Next, I'll drill three holes for the mounting screws. Finally, I'll drill and tap three holes in the fixed drawer.
The next thing I have to do is machine the through holes which will be used for the clamping mechanism of the vise and I'll also use these holes to hold the vise onto the mill table. Now it's a relatively deep hole for this size of drill and I want to drill it as one operation rather than drill it halfway, flip it and drill the other half. So to make sure the drill bit doesn't wander while drilling the hole, I'll keep it as cool as possible and I'll keep the flutes free of chips. And after drilling the first hole, I made sure that the hole didn't wander, which it thankfully didn't, so I set up the DRO to drill the other holes. With the holes now drilled, I'll turn the part and then I'll start machining the slot and the cavity that's beneath the vise. I'll start off by using a roughing end mill, which is really good at removing a lot of material, but it leaves a pretty lousy finish. So once I do that, I'll swap out the tool and clean it up with a proper finishing end mill. And it's in situations like this where having a flood coolant system is really useful in flushing out the chips and keeping the end mill as cool as possible. Next, I'll come in with a carbide end mill to open out the space underneath the vise. With the slot and void now cut, I need to machine a step down on the side for the moving jaw. As you can probably see, that last cut took a lot of life out of that carbide end mill, so I'll swap it out for a brand new one. With the step down now cut, I need to find a way to relieve the inside corner and a small slot will do. Now the normal way of doing this would be to hold the part in a tilt vise or tilt the head on the milling machine, but my milling machine can't do that and I don't own a tilt vise.
As a very quick solution, I made up a very basic tilt vise using the old mill vise and a scrap piece of steel. It's not perfect, but for a very simple cut like this, it's more than enough. And that worked out pretty well. I did make one small mistake whilst cutting it, but that was my fault. With the main body and fixed jaw now done, I can now start machining the moving jaw. I'm going to machine a channel underneath it, which is slightly smaller than the step down on the base. And like before, I'll use the slitting saw to relieve the inside corner. On the drawing, there's a 45 degree slope on the back for the clamping screw, which I'll machine in. Next, I'll drill the hole for the clamping screw. The hole needs a concave opening for the clamping screw, and I'll cut that in using a router bit. On the bottom side, the hole needs to flare out to allow the screw and clamping mechanism to pivot and move around. I'll start off by using an end mill to open up the hole and then I'll finish it off with a dremel and grinding stone. With the vise now mostly done, we can move over to the lathe to produce the clamping mechanism. The first part I'm going to make is going to be a domed part for the clamping screw.
The radius on the dome matches the opening that I cut before and this will allow the clamping screw to move around and still clamp very tightly on the moving jaw. The second part that I need to make is the clamping mechanism that fits into the bottom of the vise. I'll drill a hole in the part and then I'll cut it off. I'll turn down a piece of steel and then I'll weld it to the other part. Now in hindsight, I could have brazed it in place to keep the buildup of material to a minimum, but this still works and the insert fits. Now at this point, I'd love to show it working, but since I made everything oversized, the jaws won't fit on the main body. But that isn't the main focus at the moment. If you look closely at the parts, you'll be able to see a bunch of nicks, scratches and dents in the part which have been picked up over the several weeks it's taken to machine these parts. The nicks and scratches are pretty easy to get because the steel is soft, well at least relatively. Now if this was a regular medium or high carbon steel, we could heat the part up, quench it and it would be harder. But because it is a low carbon steel, if I take an off cut, heat it up with a propane torch and then quench it in water, I'll find that the hardness hasn't changed. And for a toolmaker's vise, which is normally hardened, that is a problem. But that's a problem that I'll tackle next week. As for now, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next week.